بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ فسٹ آف آل ود اے گڈ نیوز ناٹ ٹرنگ یو اباؤٹ دا ٹاپک نیو فسٹ فسٹ آئی ٹیل یو اباؤٹ دا نیوز اینڈ دا نیوز از دیٹ آئی ہیو کراسڈ ون تھاؤزینڈ سبسکرائبرز آن یو ٹیوب اینڈ آلسو ون تھاؤزینڈ فالوورز آن فیس بک سو دس از آل بیکاز آف یو گائز سو یو نیڈ ٹو کانگریچولیٹ می اینڈ آئی نیڈ ٹو تھینک یو سو تھینک یو گائز دس از آل بیکاز آف یو And one thing else, uh, while checking my analytics yesterday, I saw that the uh, videos that are being watched, so, the, so that are the people that 92% have not subscribed to the channel. And only 8% of my viewers are those who have subscribed to the channel. So please, if you're watching this video, you should subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in more videos, you need to press the bell icon for all, press the turn on the notification for all the videos. If you're not interested in more videos, at least do subscribe to the channel, turn off the notifications. Yes? Yes. So. <coughs> Anyways, the topic of today, <coughs> what is the topic? Today's topic is the load line analysis of a diode. So let me give the heading, it's the load line analysis. Uh, one thing is, I'm not uh, feeling quite well today, so my throat, right? <coughs> so if I'm, if I'm uh, coughing during the video, so excuse me please, I'm sorry for that. I'll try to keep my volume down a little. Anyways, load line analysis of a diode. What is a load line? A load line comes from your circuit. You are given a particular circuit you containing a non-linear element. What is a non-linear element? Whose voltage and current do not have a linear relationship, such as a diode. So a circuit that contains what? That contains a non-linear element and you apply a KVL to it. You have a non-linear element in the, diode, uh, in the circuit like a diode. You apply the KVL to it, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and then you plot it. Then you plot it. So that graphical picture, that graphical picture will be called what will be called a load line and the load line analysis of a diode means what we will draw it on the same graph on which the characteristics of a diode are drawn the volt ampere characteristics fine so this i told you the definition only you will understand it when you get to it so the first thing is you need to have a non-linear element Fine. Considering a simple circuit, let's say let's say you have a simple voltage source, you have a, 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 a diode and a resistor. Let's say you have a resistor and you have a forward biased diode. Fine. Let's say this is V, the voltage across this would be Vr, the voltage across this would be Vd. Isn't it like this? It is. So what you do is you apply KVL to this. So if you apply KVL in this direction, so what happens is if this is the positive negative terminal, so you know the, the voltage drops from the, from the what? From your basic network analysis, the voltage drop would occur, a voltage drop would occur. So if you apply KVL, so the KVL implies what? You have a V, minus vr or you could say a current would flow through the uh, through the circuit and that would be a same uh, that would be same throughout the elements let me name it as id the diode current so if i write it as a combination of both so i let me write it as r times and let's say this is the load resistor rl times id and then you have a, a minus v d and this is equal to zero and let's see if i have named it by any other thing no so this is the same thing so from this you could say what you could say your v uh, your v would be equal to what this would imply that your v is equal to vd plus id times rl keep this equation in your mind or let me name it as 
equation one now this is your what this is the equation of the circuit containing a non-linear element diode we will plot this the plot of this would be called load line another point i missed to tell you that this is the topic from chapter number two the first topic of chapter two but why am i doing it here because we need to cover the resistance levels of a diode so for that we need to know the q point and the q point comes from the load line analysis fine <coughs> okay now what do we have what do we have so let me show you let's say we have this as the volt ampere characteristics of a diode let's say this is the voltage this is the the value of the current fine so uh, if i need if i draw it let's say with a green color so if this is the barrier potential so what happens is the current stays zero and then it rises please draw proper graph you know how to draw proper graph let's say your barrier potential is somewhere here we consider this sort of a model and we don't have any resistance etc you know the basics this is what this is a diode characteristics the green represents the diode characteristics or the diode response and you know this very well now we need to plot these things so 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 as we know this is a line load line this suggests this is a straight line so let's say we have if we have two values the minimum values required for a straight line are two so we need two points so let's say we do what first we do uh, we take the two intercepts let's say we take the two intercepts so out of this first that i do is what i let's say i take the y intercept so for that i make this vd equal to zero so vd is equal to zero would imply what that i would have v is equal to id rl right v is equal to id rl and this would give me a point id and that id would be equal to what i would be equal to uh, v upon rl v upon rl so what is that point that point is let's say somewhere over here somewhere over here the coordinates uh, uh, let's say the, let's say whatever the coordinate would leave the coordinates so are v upon r l if you're writing in the carbon coordinate form so let's say we write a zero over here and, and and this is the representation fine so we've got one point for the second point let's say we take the x intercept so for that what do we do we make the current equal to zero we make the current equal to zero so id would be equal to zero for that case so if id is equal to zero v is equal to vd and isn't it like this v is equal to vd so which means you would have over here you would have a point that basically these are the id axis vd axis right so v, vd is equal to v you could say vd is equal to v basically so somewhere over here is let's say that voltage so that would have v and zero would be the coordinates of that right so by joining these two points the points the line that we get the line the straight line that we get this line is called the load line this line is called the load line is that fine it is the diode response is irrespective of the circuit it is placed in if you have a capacitor over here if you have resistor in series resistor in parallel doesn't matter the diode response the diode characteristics will be the same but the load line will vary depending on the circuit and this you know very well you apply KVL to a different circuit, you would have different values, you would have different different things. Fine? Yes. The main point, we have what? We have an intersection. We have an intersection. This is something important. 
this point of intersection the point of intersection is called what it's called the 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 q point this is the q point The Q point is all is Q stands for quiescent. It's also called the operating point. Quiescent means still or unvarying. This is the point of intersection. The detail I'm coming. What is the, the, the significance of this? I'm coming to that. But I believe you've got whatever I have set till here. Now, what if this is steeper or what is this, what happened, what would happen about the slope, right? So what is the variation with the slope? So let's say we, we see that as well. So slope of this line, slope of load line. So what happens is that you have V is equal to V D plus I D R L, right? So and, and, and you know the line equation that is equal to Y is equal to M X plus C. So over here you have your Y is what? Your Y is I D. Y is I D. Uh, M is what we want to find out. X is V D and C would also come. So we need to arrange it in this sort of an order. So ID, you, you shift it to this side. So you have an ID RL. You would have ID RL. This will be equal to V minus VD. Fine. So now what in the next step, what do you do? In the next step, you divide by an RL. So ID is equal to v upon rl minus vd upon rl now the variable is what the variable is x is vd right yes so so this is mx so so let's say we arrange it in this form so that uh, id is equal to negative vd upon rl plus v upon rl so what do you got from here the slope is what? The slope that is equal to m is equal to negative 1 upon rl. And c you have got what? c is v upon rl. Isn't it like this? It is. It is. And this is what? This c is the intercept basically. And you already know this is the intercept. <coughs> Sorry. Is that fine till here? It is. Now with the slope, have a look as it changes, as the line gets steeper or it gets higher, what would happen? What's the opposite of steeper? I forgot. Steeper and higher would be the same. Anyways, this is not an English class. So if it gets down or it gets up, so which means what? That the resistance is changing. Because the slope has a relation with the resistance and if the slope changes, the resistance changes, this means if the line moves, the Q point changes. So which means the Q point is independent directly, independent, indirectly dependent on the load resistance RL. This is the load resistance RL. Is that fine till here? It is. So by changing RL, the Q point will also change because the slope will change. And the negative, the negative sign indicates what? The decreasing slope, right? So if you have an increased RL, if you have an increased RL, so this would lie somewhere here, the Q point would come down. Is that fine? So we'll see by examples and you'll understand it in a better way. For now, I believe this is enough. For now, I believe this is enough. Explanation of the Q point. Why Q point? Why is it important? Why do we operate our circuit at this point? Simple explanation. Most people don't say it. Don't know it maybe. 
The thing is, they tell till they come till here, and they say that this is the Q point, this is the operating point, and this is the this is the intersection of the two, and that's it. Tell me why? What is the significance of it? Why do I need it? Why do I need to operate my circuit at this point? If you are telling me that the circuit is stable, why or how is it stable? The reason is, the reason is what? Simple, in simple words. Let's say the green is the characteristics of a diode, any device, any device. So at this particular voltage, at this particular voltage, this device can give me this amount of current. Can give me means what? Can let pass. Right? So this device can give me this amount of current. But the load that I have to drive that load, to run that load, I need a higher amount of current. So, it will not drive the load, will no, we'll not have any operation, right, yes, increase the voltage, let's say here, at this particular voltage, I have this amount of current in my circuit, why, because my device is allowing this amount of current, this device is giving me this much current in the circuit, but to drive my load, to have my operation, I need this amount of current and, and, and this is way less than it, so no, at this point, I need this amount of current in my circuit to drive my load but the device is giving me a very high amount of current at this particular voltage which means this would destroy the load this would burn the windings let's say if this is some sort of a machine connected to it now you're getting my point but the thing is when the uh, the 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 the, the current given by the low by the device in this particular state the diode is equal to the current needed to drive the load they become equal that point is the point of operation of the circuit that point is called the Q point of the diode I believe you've got it and if you want me to write it so yes I will write it when the current given by a device becomes equal to the current required to drive the load this point is basically the Q point and this is this is the explanation to it we'll revise this load line analysis when we're discussing the examples Fine? So, come back now. Let's say we have an example. We have an example. Determine the Q point. A circuit is given to me. I have a question. The question is to determine the Q point. And a circuit is given. A simple circuit has that. So, I have a load resistance. And this should be properly drawn over here for a better understanding. But anyways, now I have drawn it. So the values are given. The values are given 10 volts, 1 kilo ohms, 1 kilo ohms. And for this, the barrier potential is given to be 0.8. So for this, the barrier potential is given to be 0.8. And this is from proper graph. Let's say I draw it. If this is the voltage across the diode, this is the current through it. This is 0.8. Determine the Q point. So determine the Q point. This means you have to determine the V D Q I D Q. Fine. This is VDQ, this is IDQ. 
So how do you do it? How do you do it? You apply your key VL to it. You apply your... You have your formulas there. You have your formulas there. This is your one formula. This is your second formula. So from this I could directly say that my Q point is what? This is equal to V 10 volt upon RL 1 kilo ohms. So 10 milliamperes. 10 milliamperes is the current. Voltage is what? It's equal to V 10 volts. But let's say we check it. Let's say we check it. I don't, I don't uh, tell you directly. Uh, no, 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 this is not the Q point. I'm sorry. This is not the Q point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not the Q point. This formula is to find the intercepts. So you've, you've directly found your, your intercepts. Right? Let's say we have a 10 over here, 10 milliamps, and this 10 is somewhere over here. So this is, draw it properly please. I've drawn it on a proper graph for myself. So this gives you the Q point. But if you don't remember the formula directly, so in that case what you need to do? You need to apply the KVL, right? So if you apply the KVL, so let's say we go in this direction. So you have a 10 volts, 10 minus ID times, ID times what? Uh, 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 ID into 10 to the power 3, let's say. And then you have a, a minus, and for that what do you do? For VD, VD, of course you put it as it is, VD, and this is equal to 0. So from here you could say that VD is equal to 10 minus 10 to the power 3 times ID. And when you put uh, VD is equal to 0, so I hope, to, I believe the video has got long, but I'm sorry. And I don't think it has got boring. So when VD is equal to 0, this would imply what that you are, uh, so this 10 would come here. So ID would be simply a 10 milliamperes. 10 milliamperes, right? And, and then when you put ID equal to 0, so you get again your VD to be equal to 10 volts. And this is what it is. So you need to apply the KVL for this. The Q point that I have obtained on a proper scale of graph, a proper graph is 0 0.8 and 9.2. So have a look, I have not drawn it properly, right? 0 0.8 9.2 which means this thing is 0.8 this thing is 9.2 so you draw it on a proper graph paper with a proper scale this is a random graph this i was just telling you the method if the voltage across the resistor is unknown what do you need to do you know it's i times the what? The resistance. So ID is 10 milliamps. No. ID. ID. So for that we now consider the IDQ. The point of operation. Right? So the IDQ is 9.2. And that is a 9.2 into 10 to the negative 3. And you multiply it with the value of resistance. Which is 1 into 10 power 3. So this is a 9.2 volts. That is it. I finish it over here. The most important thing in this video, the most important thing in this video was this point. What is a Q point? Mathematically, you know. Physically, what is the significance is this. See you in the next lecture very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.